the school year, you know. Yeah. Well, tell so, me about that, and, and don't mind the the camera. I know it's very intrusive to have a camera sticking okay. into your face. But go ahead. Yeah, tell well, me. Well, my mom, um, yeah. she taught and retired from Irving ISD. Yeah. And she um, was a second grade teacher as well. Yeah. So I say teaching is in my blood because um, she had some teachers that she taught with for 25 years. And, you know, I, they were like moms to me too. We'd go up yeah. and spend a lot of time together getting things ready. And, yeah and stuff for the school year and then um, I went away to college and um, went to UNT and got my teaching um, degree and nice. came yeah. back and did my student teaching here in Irving and taught for five years but then decided that I wanted to stay home with my kids oh, yeah. so I stayed home with my kids for 17 years <laughs> and now I'm back in the classroom at Thomas Haley Elementary here in Irving ISD. Well, you must have a story to share because teaching and students have changed. Oh, yes, they have. And um, the main thing about teaching that's changed is um, not so much the management, but the use of technology and accountability. Um, I had to learn a lot when I jumped back in. Yeah, because homework what is it called? Is it called the flip? Things have just reversed themselves? Yes, lots of projects um, that are done with technology and on the computer, um, lots of typing and documents uh -huh. and um, lots of group work, problem solving, but it's good. It's just, it's teaching me a lot too. <laughs> wow. Well, tell us your feeling when you went back into the classroom and you, you said, my God, this is different. What, what went through your mind? Well, what went through my mind is, oh no, <laughs> am, I, am I ever going to be able to catch up to all the years I was away um, with the technology and just the new um, types of curriculum? And, um, but what I felt in my heart was the, the teaching was still there, that, that gift I feel like I just naturally had. The classroom management, it's there. Talking to parents, I had that, but the hard part was just learning how to teach um, kids in today's world who have such a knowledge of electronics and TV and yeah. movies, and you know they they don't um, like to be taught in ways that are just lecturing. They want interactive, exciting, hands-on yeah. lessons. Yeah, do they have their iPhones out when you're teaching? Yeah. Oh. No, <laughs> they have to stay in their backpack. <laughs> hey, mind if I let our dog out? Oh, that's fine. He, he's kind of big, but no, sweet as could be. That's fine. I'm. I feel safe here. <laughs> right. He's a nice dog. He's just a big puppy. Yes. So, um, well, t tell us about um, the, the sh dealing. Well, let's be positive. What do you find most rewarding about uh, just the camera? What do you find most rewarding about teaching? Well, what I love most about teaching is, um, especially with younger kids, second grade, first grade, they, um, the kids that I teach come from homes where they don't have a lot of experiences. Yeah. So the experiences that I feel like I give them, they are excited and appreciative of, they appreciate learning and they um, want to know more. And um, I, I believe that in a, classroom like mine they feel safe to ask questions and it's very safe and nurturing environment and I um, mainly love that they grow to love books by the time they leave my class they have authors that they want to go find at the library and um, I just feel like when they leave my class they do have a love of some kind of book so that's what you find most rewarding about it. Yes, is that when they come to me, they're not always excited about reading and writing. Um, but when they leave, they, they all have an author that they can say, oh, I'm going to go and look for more books by that author this summer. That seems so challenging because with all the distractions, the iPads, the iPods, the computers, the movies, the Netflix, uh, you're able to overcome those distractions. So how do you do that exactly? Um, I read aloud to them every day. So I like to, um, and I like to use books. I like to integrate books into my lessons like math or science. And I just like to make books come alive for them and see that it's better than a movie. You know, it's, it, it, it can be your, your imagination and you can make it what you want it to be. It's a great escape. You can pick up on this, but Sydney's natural gift is teaching. She's very talented yeah. and uh, right now she's um, dual language certified. She's 
teaches the gifted and talented class. She's a grade level chairperson. And when she says she had a hard time, a little bit adapting and going back, it was at the level that she expected to be. So she mm -hmm. held yeah. herself to a pretty high yeah. um, standard. And so she's, she's done fine. It's just the technology <laughs> took a little while. Yeah, and I'm still learning the technology. That's, I think that's my biggest challenge over the summer is trying to learn Twitter and all the things that are have just become a part of education yeah. um, that I'm still learning myself. I can imagine. I would think some of this, the students can educate you in some ways. Mm -hmm. Yes. By so I'm always learning. I feel like I'm teaching, but I'm always learning myself. Yeah. <laughs> By the end of the school year, I typically know the kids in the class. In my mind, I can almost visualize them. So if I ever meet them, I say, that's so-and-so, isn't it? Because <laughs> so -so. she'll come home and tell me stories about the yeah. kids. And these kids, um, I would say, have some challenging upbringing for the most part, um, kind of underprivileged. Um, and so it's, she could have taught at Coppell, she could have taught at South Lake, but she has a heart for Irving because we've been in Irving our whole lives and to help kids that really have some obstacles to their education. Sure. And she does a great job in yeah. helping them clear I, those I was born in Irving and went to Irving schools myself. So yeah. I just, I've seen it change over the years and um, you know, I still love it. it. Irving is, even though it's big and urban now, it it's still there are still people that make me feel like I'm in a small town. Blitz. Sorry. The licking feels good, actually. <laughs> he's a big. Uh, he's, he's a, a big. Team. He's a big puppy. Uh, so I I understand. Uh, for the record, remind me the grade in the school so we have. Oh, a second grade at Thomas Haley Elementary okay. in Irving ISD. And when did you know you had this uh, ability? and skill and heart and soul for teaching? Well, um, I in high school, I did a vocational, at Irving High School, I did a vocational program called P-E-L-E. -E, and that was a class where you got to go out and do Sorry. some work with kindergarten classes um, during the school day. And I did love that. And I think because I had seen my mom model being a teacher, she'd bring home her bags of papers and I had just some insight into that and it just felt very natural and comfortable to me. But my mom actually didn't want me to become a teacher. So when I went off to UNT, originally I was in the field of business marketing mm -hmm. because she said, you know, you're going to work so hard and you're not going to get much pay and are you sure you want to do this? And so I tried that out, but I had no heart for it. <laughs> so. I ended up moving back into education. I see. Neat. Tell us about um, your family. Um, my family here. Well, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you have a one child. Yeah, I have two, mm. two children. Two I have children. a daughter, Shelby, who um, is a, a going to be going to UNT this fall um, and studying art. And I have a son, Sean, who just graduated from a faith. Um, Christian school in Grapevine, and he's going off to Texas A&M um, to study business. Nice, nice. And how did the two of you meet? Well, Roy and I, um, we knew each other in middle school at Crockett Junior High, Crockett Middle School in Irving. In Irving, yeah. And we actually grew up in the same neighborhood. Um, he went to a different elementary, but we met each other in middle school and sixth grade and I had one of my very best friends was going going steady with him and um, when they would get into arguments she would call me and say would you call Roy he's being so hard to deal with and so we, we would spend a long time on the phone and we got to know each other because we had classes together and so after they broke up then we ended up going steady <laughs> and we stayed together um, for seventh grade and broke up for a couple of years and then got back together in 10th grade at Irving High School and stayed together mm. till we got married uh, after I graduated from UNT. That's a great story. And, and how did you get together again? How, how was the romance re reignited? That was actually when she was talking about uh, her, her best friend and I were dating. And so whenever there was any kind of deal, Cindy was the peacemaker, call her, call me, call her, call me. And it wasn't, this was in, right before our 
junior year, I believe, sophomore year. That was our sophomore year at the beginning of our sophomore, sophomore year, year when we started. Uh, Dad realized she's a lot easier to talk to <laughs> than my girlfriend <laughs> is, so started talking to Cindy more and more, and and uh, we started dating and mm-hmm. haven't stopped. That is a wonderful story. Did that surprise any of you? you did you have any inkling that this was going to happen? Um, I don't think that we ne- ever dreamed that we'd really get married. I know that um, we you know, stayed together and, you know, of course we had our fights. It wasn't always rosy. We had our arguments. Um, but I think when we went to college, I went away to college to UNT and he stayed here and he managed a business and went to Northlake to get his associate's degree. So that was the time that was really challenging um, because I went to UNT and had a different lifestyle than he had here. But um, we we went through a lot of ups and downs and I think our parents were skeptical that we would make it. But in the end, mm-hmm. you know, we've... Well, you grow a lot from 18 to 23, as yeah. you would imagine, yeah. 18 to 22. And so we did. And... And everything from our ideas about religion or faith to life and how we wanted to live it uh, changed in those years. But we always kind of changed together. And so there was definitely some growing pains, but it, Mm -hmm. it worked out very well. I think we were actually trying to figure that out earlier than most people were trying to figure that out could Mm -hmm. we work together could we not what do we agree on what do we disagree and to this date Cindy has responsibilities in our family that are unique and separate to mine as in education guiding the kids where to go to school how they're going to study those type of things Um, and he's really better at guiding us financially and preparing for our future whereas I don't have much much uh, expertise in that field so it's good that we have our strengths that we can yeah. bring to the table you complement each other and speaking of your business tell mm-hmm. us about uh, your business well um, as Cindy said I, I managed a business right after high school for about five years mm-hmm. I had worked there the previous five years through high school managed it the last five years which was an army navy store with a pawn shop and so after that many years and after five years in high, after high school managing, managing that business, I thought, you know, I can do this for myself. And so at 23, we had recently gotten married and, and then in 89, I started our business and, um, and it, thank God, went very well. We had an a individual from the community who invested really in me and said, I'll fund this business and here's how we're going to do it you know pay you back this amount of interest such and such and so it worked out thank god it went really well and uh, had some family working for us and then um, we decided as cindy said to have a family and that's when we decided to move to hatbury creek we were in south irving off of shady grove and rogers and we liked it fine and then when kids came along we started looking at oh when she was pregnant and before our kids came along we started looking at schools where we want them to go and Los Colinas Elementary was a draw to us Uh, at that time it was a great school and then uh, frankly when Cindy got involved there once she had stopped teaching it and other moms it became an excellent Mm -hmm. school I came became once my kids entered kindergarten there I became very involved I was PTA president and a group of us moms really put time into um, making that a wonderful school. At that time, uh, when our kids were starting kindergarten, there were um, many families who didn't necessarily believe in Las Colinas Elementary and public, doing public a lot education. of private schools. Right. Um, in general, yeah. Because they thought public schools uh, weren't as good in, as... Inferior to inferior, private inferior, schools. Inferior, yeah. And we, we had yeah. both attended public schools our whole life in Irving. Yeah, yeah. And so we had a little different view that they could be whatever we as a community made them mm-hmm. and so we I think and this is such a great community and yeah. one of the things that sold us on moving here with our kids was um the elementary school that you know has a gate the back part is in the community it's yeah. gated and that's yeah. so unusual um and the fact that we wanted our kids to be able to know 
um, like we had growing up, friends that we could all go to school with and be friends with after school and play together after school, you know, riding bikes and playing at the park, as opposed to when you're at private schools, then you have to set up these play dates you know, in different cities, Driving you know, to Dallas driving or Fort Worth or. and we just really wanted that sense of community like we had mm -hmm. growing up in Irving. And mm -hmm. so, um, yes, I stayed really involved in Las Colinas Elementary and Barbara Bush, Bush and mm -hmm. Ranch View um, until um, my kids started driving and I started to see that you know, I probably should go back to the classroom. So I went back to the classroom part-time as what they call an interventionist. And it's where you just pull out kids and you tutor them when our at Thomas was, Haley before I went full-time right. uh, when our youngest was 16. Uh, 16. So he started and so um, it wasn't until after doing that for about a year and a half that I, I, there was a position available in the middle of the school year in second grade that um, they offered to me it was in february and the teacher just had to leave and we in our, a few days so our, our, that's what made me jump in full time right and our business was successful so she was able for those 17 years to stay home and really the kids became she you know a, a working mom yeah. so to speak ran the household took care of the kids volunteered a tremendous amount of time at uh, Bush, I'm sorry, at Los Angeles Elementary originally. And it's about that time I said, well, you might as well get a job there because you're there, <laughs> yeah, all, you're the there all the time. Yeah. But she was real passionate. Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, I was passionate off. because I felt like I had a unique insight because I was a teacher and came from a family of yeah. teachers, but I was also a parent. So I, I felt like PTA is really not just a parent you know, led, run yeah, organization. Yeah. It's really parent teacher association. So mm -hmm. I wanted it, I wanted people to feel that it really it's, you know, we needed to remember how the teachers are feeling and how tired they are and, yes. you know, yes. really bring that perspective. Yes. Uh, what you're doing is inspirational, both of you. I want to explore that because you could have taught at other schools, mm -hmm. but you, you took on a, a challenge where the students were, may not have been, what, the easiest? to work with yes the easiest troubled, to grow? troubled upbringing you yeah. know um single parent um mm -hmm. a lot of behavioral in some cases situations um it, well um most the majority of our school is free lunch so just yeah lack of really mm -hmm. resources i mean structures they, in some cases some poverty mm -hmm. you know I, I had a boy in my class who was homeless um so kids who came to school with a lot of needs, emotional needs, um, you know, we served breakfast there, lunch Doesn't there. Yeah. Um, We're able to buy clothes. So you really have to kids. put on your hat of um, making sure their needs are met before you can even teach them anything. Mm -hmm. So it was, I felt like something that I, I just had a heart for it. I, it's what I wanted to do. Yeah. It wouldn't be to me is fulfilling to teach kids who have everything that they want and need at their yeah. fingertips every day. These kids, I felt like, need, really needed what I had. And they appreciate yeah. what you do for them too, mm -hmm. because they don't have that done. They appreciate a yeah. sticker or a pencil. Really? Right. Whereas, um, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not sure that the other kids would have appreciated those things. And I think just even mm -hmm. kindness and interest and encouragement and all of those yeah. things that they may not be getting love yeah. loving those kids where yeah. they sometimes weren't experiencing it like they should and they probably lacked role models at home mm, yeah definitely that's mm -hmm. definitely the case that's definitely the case she would their role models open. um unfortunately i think became the tv and um so, and we know how that is mm -hmm. yes <laughs> so i yeah. i felt like um they they just needed somebody to really to really care about them that they could trust yeah that's a great that's a great story tell us more about your business and and how you've made it successful well you know we started out um a little bit on the shoestring as you can imagine i was 22 uh borrowed all the money it took we had a uh, uh an individual who was the elder at the church that cindy had grown up in central church of christ I grew up Catholic, so that was a challenge to try to bring those two backgrounds that together. That was part of our challenge. <laughs> that was one of the challenges we dealt with in, yeah. in yes. college. But um, 
he he invested in me, loaned, loaned the money to, for me to start the business and employ family members at first because mm-hmm. that's all I could afford. Yeah. And they worked on the cheap, so to speak, until um, I could hire other employees. And um, it we just grew it. At that point, I had stopped working for this company I was managing and literally uh, we didn't make I didn't make a nickel for the for the next two years we lived off Cindy's teacher salary and we had a home Uh, fortunately that's all the debt we had our cars were paid off everything else was paid but we had to make house payments and so we lived very frugally for those next two years especially and then I gave myself a really small salary and the reason I bring all that up is I think one of the reasons we were successful and have remained successful is because we kept our overhead very low, stayed with very low debt, and the next few years we were able to save quite a bit of money, and, and which is one of the reasons we moved to Hackberry was because we wanted to invest in a, in a better neighborhood um, as far as from a financial perspective with some growth Uh, invest in a better neighborhood that had a little higher level of schools um, where we would definitely feel safe uh, those types of things and so we did that and uh, our business just continued to grow and we were blessed we have a 23 year employee uh, and we have an 18 year employee who you know have um, felt appreciated and and I think really if the underlying story in all this is probably caring uh, for people caring for our community um, Cindy has always cared um, ever since you know we were young uh, we were involved in leadership in our, at our high school together Cindy took on the challenge of not only our kids but other kids even when she was a PTA organizer um, for me I got involved for years on this in the city with different charitable organizations and then planning and zoning commissions and Irving Convention and Visitors Bureau City Council um, still involved hospital boards those types of things and and Cindy of course supported all those roles and has done quite a bit herself with the Irving Heritage Society and um, Irving Healthcare Foundation and so that that has run through a lot of stuff. We've given a lot of volunteer hours um, yeah, that yes. that really have has blessed us in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's has a lot to do with the business being successful. Plus, in the business community, it's the same thing. People don't do business with businesses. They do business with people. Mm-hmm. If they like you, they'll do business with you. And if they don't, or you seem like you don't care yeah. about your customer, yeah. They're not. Yeah. So yeah. we compete with a lot of big businesses that are publicly traded companies because we take care of our customers. It's customer service. It, it all boils down to care. It all boils down to doing the right thing, whether it's her students, my customers, our city, our neighborhood. It, you know, it's yeah. your community any way you see it. That's well said. That, that it kind of summarizes it. Uh, what is the name of your business and where is it located? It's Roy's Pawn Shop Incorporated and it's uh, in Irving, on Irving Boulevard, okay. um, in South Irving. We have three family businesses there. My dad has a barber shop right next to my business, which was his dream growing up to have his own barber shop. And when I purchased that property, he was able to fulfill that dream um, and have his own place. And then my brother came to work for me and worked for me for about three years and we were able to get his store started which is Lone Star Pond in Irving on Irving Boulevard. So so your stores are close together? They are. All three Just of ours street. are within a mile of each other. But So both of you then are in the same business? We then. are. We're competitors. Friendly competitors but competitors nonetheless. <laughs> and you, We've shared employees though and yeah, help each other out, out in well. the jam. We're, our family's very tight. I come from a large family how, how large? Uh, I'm, well, I'm one of five kids, yeah. and uh, one of my brothers has passed, but um, we were just tight our whole lives mm-hmm. growing up. Cindy comes from a smaller family, and there are some different dynamics in that, too, 
but we both you know obviously care about our family it's family mm -hmm. first our families still live a few blocks from each other in the mm -hmm. homes that we grew up in mm -hmm. um yes. so it, it is nice that they're both right there in the same it, it is very nice same neighborhood yeah you guys have great stories to tell here <laughs> well thank you um w w what would surprise people about the business you're in well you know years ago pawn shops had a kind of a negative stigma and uh, <clears throat> a lot of it people just don't understand you know they remember some old disney movies or the movies from the 1950s that depicted pawn shops in kind of a shady um, area so that surprised them sometimes that I was in that business of course when they came and visited your business they saw a whole nother uh, world uh, but also um, pawn shops have mainstreamed quite some time ago when Cash America made the first public offering and a lot of white-collar business executives were investing in the pawn shop business and then things like Pawn Stars came out, um, you know, it's number one show, I think, still on the History Channel, I believe. Yeah. And so more people start to understand what it is that we do, then it uh, opened up a lot of other opportunities to where now we have people from all parts of the community coming by. We have, you know, people that only buy, people that only sometimes will sell stuff, people that loan money, you know, borrow money, pick it up. Um, in all of those consign we have you know you know you know possibly a lady here in hackberry has a nice piece of jewelry she never wears hey roy can you sell this for me um or buy it outright so i think what surprises people or what they don't under didn't understand and more and more they do is how that business fits into the community we have never gone after the uh cash for title loan business or the payday loan business We're, we easily could have adapted to those but they're frankly predatory in my opinion um they're not good for the community and uh, so we haven't haven't done that and uh, i think that's another reason that i believe god's blessed our business in the sense that if you take care of people and i'm a believer in that too that if mm -hmm. you help other people be successful you can't help but be successful yourself and so we have tried to make other people successful whether it's her students or my customers or um, our community as a whole at the city level um, i think that it, you know <laughs> some people call it uh, karma some people say what goes around comes around the bible says you reap what you sow you both are very spiritual. We are. Yeah, we were both mm -hmm. raised uh, in God-fearing homes, certainly. And um, we, we definitely have a deep faith, no doubt. That's one of the things that drives. Yes, and, and that was something that, um, again, about Hackberry that we loved is because our, our church, um, later after we moved here, we became members of Irving Bible Church. That so became our common ground. That became our common ground because it... <laughs> Our common ground is the Bible. We both believe in the Bible. Mm -hmm. We just grew up and with different traditions right. um, of studying the Bible, but we agreed on the same things. And um, so I, I have loved, Hackberry is definitely home. Um, we raised our kids um, over on Pine Street, which is not far from um, Shumard, Shumard Oak. Oak, it's not. Um, and we were there for 17 years. Mm -hmm. And then we moved here. Pine Street's a little bitty cul-de-sac off of Aristocrat. Nobody knows of Pine Street. I know Because it's a cul-de-sac yeah. off a of cul-de-sac. It's, <laughs> it's a double cul-de-sac. Double cul-de-sac. Um, and I loved, uh, I loved raising our kids there because we were close to our church. We were close, close to, to school. our school. Um, and, you know, I just made friends. When, when um, my kids went to um, Las Colinas Elementary, I think I've made my very best closest friends because there was a group of moms that um, decided to start a moms in touch group and just pray for the school and pray for the needs of the school and pray for our own kids and we um prayed till they graduated from um high school, high school the same moms. together the same group of moms mm -hmm. and we you know walked around las colinas and prayed over it before school would start and those friendships you know I'm still they are still my very best friends even though they're our kids are now some of them in college 
And they plugged in and um, became room moms too. Yes, but we, you know, became um, we became active at the country club with swim team in the summers, and yeah. um, this is just home. And mm-hmm. when it came time for us to to look for another house for kind of the next phase of our life after our kids were going away to college, we both were. I mean, without any hesitation, so we need to find another home in Hackberry. Yeah, we didn't even look we, outside of Hackberry. Yeah. This this is home. I, I can't yes. imagine living anywhere else. I want to ask you more about that in a second. Just for the record, how old is your son now? Okay, my son is 18, 18. and my daughter's 20. Okay, all right. Yes. And uh, they are going to, what's their status? Um, Shelby is a sophomore, and um, she's almost a junior, and she'll be, um, she's will be. she been at Texas State, and mm-hmm. now she is going to be going to UNT to study um, art. They have a fibers and textiles major that she wants to do, and Sean will be attending Texas A&M in the fall, and he will be studying business. Great. Nice. Let me check my camera, and you guys can think of something that's relevant that I haven't asked.